Okay, great. Thank you, Don. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining DEED today. I'm Alicia Cortes Mayo. I'm the Communications Director. Really great to have all of you with us. Uh, today, we have um, a slight shift. So today, Labor Market Information Director, uh, Assistant Director, Ariane Cassell, will be presenting, and um, Commissioner Verilek has a scheduling conflict. We've also had some <laughs> other things going on with uh, shortage of crews at different airports. So today, we have uh, Ariane presenting, and as usual, you um, can put questions in the chat. We're happy to take those at the end, or you can use the raise hand function. And if you could please keep your devices muted, that'll really help uh, with the echoes. So we will get started. If you have any technical difficulties during the session, the session I'm sorry, um, reach out to Dawn, please. I put her email address in the chat. So thanks for joining us. And Orion, over to you. Thanks, Alicia. Alicia is going to um, display the slides. <clears throat> and then we'll get started. Sometimes it takes a minute. There we go. So Minnesota's labor force increased by 3,935 people um, between June and July, which was the fifth month of growth in a row. Um, the labor force participation ticked up one tenth of a point to 68.5%. Um, US labor force participation re remained flat in July at 62.6%. <clears throat> Minnesota's unemployment rate ticked up one tenth of a point to 3% over the month. It was 2.9% last month um, in June. This is largely due to new people joining the labor force and looking for work. Um, the U.S. unemployment rate was down a tenth to 3.5% in July. And um, Minnesota lost 400 jobs from June to July, to July on a seasonally adjusted basis with the private sector um, down 300 jobs. This was initially, this was um, essentially flat. There's uh, no uh, percent change in growth. Um, and the U.S. Uh, jobs increased by 0.1% with the private sector up also 0.1%. And you can go to the next slide. So this slide shows the, um, the unemployment rates, uh, the unemployment rate and uh, job growth, both uh, total payroll and private sector. Um, as you can see, the unemployment rate ticked up to 0.3 or to 3%. Um, number of jobs stayed basically level from last month. We're now at, uh, on a seasonally adjusted basis, 2,982,600 payroll jobs. So just focusing on the unemployment rate um, uh, in July for a second, um, the 0.1% the increase was basically due to new people joining the labor force and starting to look for work. Um, the uh, to break that down, the number of um, unemployed people ticked up uh, by 2,846 people, and the number of employed people ticked up by 1,089 people, uh, which accounted for um, both a larger labor force and a slightly higher unemployment rate. And you can go to the next slide. So this graph focuses um, on Minnesota's labor force. The number of people in the labor force grew for the fifth month in a row, up by 3,935 people to, uh, to 3.3 3, million 109,500 people, um, as the labor force participation rate ticked up one tenth of a percentage point to 68.5%. Um, this compares to 62.6% nationally. Um, and just a little uh, looking at sort of the, the trend here and the, the um, history, uh, the labor force is about 19,000 people smaller than it was immediately before the pandemic when Minnesota had a labor force participation rate of 69.9% in February 2020. Um, the decline in the labor force was expected based on long-term aging trends in Minnesota's workforce. Um, and so, you know, the, the decrease of 19,000 
um, was is 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 expected based on these um, these long term trends. Um, and at the same time, we've been seeing five months of growth in the labor force. Um, you can go to the next slide. So going back to jobs, uh, over the year, the number of jobs increased by 49,026 um, for a 1.7% um, increase. Nationally, the number of jobs increased by 2.1%. The largest increases were in education and health services, up 19,724, or 3.6%, uh, with growth, growth across that sector. Um, healthcare and social assistance employment was up 3.5%, with ambulatory healthcare services up 4.7%. Um, and then in the education, this is the private education um, uh, sector, uh, that sector grew by 2,696 jobs, or 4.5%, with widespread growth across that sector as well. Leisure and hospitality was up 11,155 jobs, or 4%. Um, this remained the largest proportional growth of any super sector in Minnesota, but it's notably down from 6.7% annual growth posted in June, um, and it was the lowest annual growth since March 2021. So this sector is beginning to level off in terms of growth coming out of the pandemic recession. Government was up 10,073 jobs, or 2.6%, with growth in federal government and both state and local non-education employment. Um, and trade, transportation, and utilities was up by 8,824 jobs, or 1.7%. Um, employment in wholesale trade was down uh, by a little over 1,000, but those declines were more than offset by growth in retail trade, and specifically motor vehicle and parts dealerships were showing really strong growth, um, and as well as transportation, warehousing, and utilities. Um, which was also showing very strong growth. So Minnesota's over the year um, job growth exceeded national job growth in construction, trade transportation, utilities, information, leisure and hospitality, and government. The two sectors that lost jobs over the year were manufacturing, which was down 2,453 jobs, or 0.7%, with the largest losses in non-durable goods. Um, this was primarily in food manufacturing, which was off by just over 1,000 jobs. Um, durable goods manufacturing also showed a small decrease of 634 jobs, or 0.3%. And financial activities was down by 3,365 jobs or 1.7%. Um, this super sector was mostly um, negative or flat in 2020, since 2020 in Minnesota. Um, so over the year in July, um, finance and insurance was down about almost 3,000 jobs. Um, credit intermediation and related activities, uh, a little over 2,000 jobs, and real estate rental and leasing was down by 380 jobs. And then the last slide is our slide on the average hourly wages. Um, so this is over the year wage growth by sector. Um, in to overall, for, um, for the entire private sector in Minnesota, wage um, the average hourly wage growth was 5.2%. This compares to 5.1% nationally and um, a 3.2% increase in the consumer price index, which is a measure of inflation. Um, the largest average hourly wage increases in July were in manufacturing, up 6.8%, construction, up 8.2%, Finance and insurance up 7.6% and nursing and residential care up 7.2% over the year. And I think we're going to open it up for questions now. Okay, thank you, Oriane. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Jesse, over to you, please. Hi, Orion. I just wanted to ask about gov the government sector. It had seen gains throughout the year and added the most new jobs of any sector last month, but it saw a bit of a downtick um, this month. I was just curious about any insights you have on what's behind that dip, whether it's a meaningful change. 
Yeah, I'm just wondering if, um, okay, so you're looking at specifically this uh, this month rather than long-term trends. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, um, the seasonally adjusted um, number was down by just by 100. Um, the over-the-year growth was very strong. Um, and you know, seasonally adjusted, we're in government. We're um, we're adjusting for things like um, the very strong growth over the summer in like Parks and Recs employment um, and other things. And those uh, those types of jobs are seasonal, generally part time, um, and are kind of they're very hard to fill during you know in this job market. I think we've all been hearing a lot about how difficult it is to find qualified lifeguards um, for beaches and pools. Um, and so probably some of the seasonally, um, the seasonally adjusted decline there is just difficulty um, finding qualified workers for those seasonal jobs. Thanks, Ariane. Other questions? Uh, this one from Brian at NPR. Orianne, how should people view the durability of this labor market in the face of some of the war notices we've seen of late with hundreds of layoffs each? Well, the durability of the labor market in general seems pretty strong. Um, we, uh, we're, we're seeing this very level unemployment rate, um, small increases in the labor force, um, continued job growth um, over the year uh, in most sectors. Um, so I think in general, um, the durability is very good. Uh, in terms of specific war notices, um, I, I, I'm not sure I can really speak to that just now without really digging into those. Mm -hmm. Orianne, I can follow up on that. Um, Brian, I can follow up on that with you. If there are any specifics, we have some of the communications team on this call from DEED as well to try to make sure we're um, accurately tracking the questions and we can do some follow up afterwards. Thanks, uh, Ethan, over to you, please. Hi, yeah, you know, I am just curious about those losses in the financial activities and manufacturing sectors. I, I might I might have missed it, but I'm just curious what we're attributing that those losses to. It looked like the, the nation had gained jobs while we did it. Yeah, I think the sector, um, the financial uh, sector that we have in Minnesota is being impacted by um, increases in the, um, the that the Federal Reserve is implementing um, in uh, uh, interest rates, um, mortgages, and um, housing uh, retail uh, housing <laughs> um, mortgages and and um, real estate activity is down, and that's really impacting Minnesota's um, finance and insurance financial activities sector right now. In terms of manufacturing, um, probably some of that is labor force challenges. Um, manufacturing is, um, in, in general, uh, as you can see from wage increases, they're, they're really um, pushing hard to find qualified workers to take the positions that are open. Thanks, Oriane. Other questions? Um, so we've got another one. Uh, can you pinpoint when wage growth started outpacing inflation here? And if that's one you need us to track Orion and um, respond uh, quickly today, we're kind of all, all hands on deck here as needed for responses. Yeah, I'm just um, looking at my spreadsheet here of um, that looks at that. Um, it might take me a minute or two, so maybe I should uh, answer that question after it. the The wage increases have been fluctuating somewhat, so they're they're back up very strong this month. Um, this is actually the strongest month we've seen in terms of um, the private sector 
in total uh, all year, this calendar year. So, um, and um, inflation has just started declining over the last three or four months. Um, so I just need to take a second to kind of put those two together and see where we're, where we land. We'll, we'll do that. Brian, happy to follow up on that one with you. Other questions right now? Can't find my uh, information down there too. Well, if um, there are no further questions, I just really want to thank all the members of the press that were able to join us. Um, we really, really appreciate your, your attention to these really important issues. And um, Commissioner Vera Luck looks forward to joining the team again uh, in September for the next jobs report. And uh, in the meantime, I encourage you to check out our labor market information resources on the DEED website. If you have any questions or are having trouble locating any of that, please reach out to me by email. Uh, my uh, email address is in the chat. And then thank you, Rita. Um, uh, there's a, a link in there that uh, hopefully you will find helpful. Thank you very much for joining us this month, and we look forward to reconnecting next month. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.